I'm going in the front row though. Chris, you might need to help me. <laughs> For king and country. That's the Britain one, eh? The British are here. All right, Chris Maddox here with the IBF Flyweight Champion, Sonny Edwards, who on December 16th looked at a second belt to his collection. He takes on Bam Rodriguez live on the zone. It'll be Sonny's first fight in the United States. This is your first trip to the U.S., Sonny, so we figured we'd take you to the most American place on Earth, Disney World. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I'm looking forward to having a look around. I mean, it's hot, though. I'm sweltering. I don't think flyweight is going to be a problem to make 16th of December anyway. <laughs> no doubt. We're going to talk about the journey it took to get you that belt for you, the fight with Bam Rodriguez, and some legacy fights that you hope are waiting for you down the line. You ready? Ready. Let's go. So we see you carrying the belt around. What's that belt mean to you? Um... You know what, it's a weird one, you know, because I always knew, in my head anyway, maybe it's delusion, maybe it's narcissism, I always knew I was destined for world level boxing, so it was more of getting there, and I feel like I'm, I'm very proud to represent the IBF and to be the IBF champion, and, and what it means, uh, you know, in, in, in boxing in general, but I don't think it's ever defined me. I don't think I've ever looked at this achievement now as the end, I feel like this was more the first step, winning the IBF and going one and in world title fights. That was sort of like my record starting again. Because yeah, it's good winning 15 and international fights and journeyman and on the way up. But I feel like when you're in those proper serious fights, that's when, you know, that's when you find out who you are. And that's when the record for me really starts counting, you know, two champions. It's a hard journey for any fighter to get to that world title, to get that belt. Uh, how difficult was yours to get to this point? Do you know what? I feel like... Where my life's been, I haven't ever done anything else other than boxing. I mean, I had my schooling, I went to university, I, I played every sport I could get my hands on, competitive to a fault, but since nine years old, I've been a, a, a career athlete, and I'll be real, I've enjoyed it. Like, I enjoy the process, I enjoy the training, I love sparring, I love fighting, I love fight week, I love, you know, this stuff, the, the promotion. Like, none of it's a burden to me, and I say it over and over again to the point that it probably get boring, but. Boxing has never been a burden to me. It's what wakes me up. I have sparring, I wake up at seven o'clock in the morning full of energy, I don't need no breakfast, I don't need no vitamins or supplements or sunlight. <laughs> I just need to go and have a spa. And yeah, boxing is all I do, all I do. It's all I've ever done. I feel like the hardest thing is gonna be not getting here in the journey or winning, losing a drawing, getting cut. I think the hardest thing for me will generally be turning my back from the boxing ring. I think that'll be probably the hardest day of my life. And you come from a fighting family, right? Your father was a trainer, your brother, of course, everybody knows Charlie. Uh, I mean, was just just in your blood from the start? Well, my dad sort of become a trainer just because of us. My dad's background, he was a racing driver. He, he had his own, what he did with his life. But my brother was a little fat kid. He wanted to start boxing, you know, before you know it, he started. Before you know it, I'm the little brother looking up to him, wanting to follow in his footsteps, putting him on a pedestal. and. It kind of snowballed from there, really. I was only nine when I started, but we didn't really have boxing around us before. Um, you know, my sister tried, you know, uh, pushing us towards it, getting us to watch the Rocky films. Your sister and, tried? Well, yeah, because, you know, I think from her age, because my, my mum and dad were old when they had us, I say old, they were like 40, 38 when they had me. Um, and my sister was sort of like the in-between, you know, like a lot of people had parents my sister's age, if that makes sense. She's about 16, 17 years older than me. Um, and I think she just understood the way the world was changing that, you know, two young boys growing up, being able to fight and defend yourself. You know, we, you know, we were born and raised, or lived in Croydon and it's, it's South London is kind of not got the best reputation of areas. Um, I stayed there for the first 18 years of my life before moving to Sheffield. So I think she always knew that having that confidence, having that discipline, that ability to defend yourself, it's so important, you know? And, and I agree, and for me, now I'm doing the same with my sons. Like, my, both of my sons, they now have to throw right and left hands and, and do their footwork and punch the bag down, pick it back up, put their hands up, and they're two and four, you know? So I guess now we are a family of fighters, and it started, yeah, really for me and my brother. My next trip will be the, the BAM fight. So, you know, my kids will stay at home for that. Um, you know, my, my eldest son came to his first fight, my last one against Campos, I'll be real. I didn't see the, um, the danger in the fight and, you know, I wanted to show him what his daddy does. Um, 
But this fight is a serious business, you know, we're in away territory, we're at war um, against a very, very good fight. And it can go any which way at any time. I'm not naive to the danger of a boxing ring, especially at this level. We are in at the, the highest level of boxing, I believe. I genuinely think that me and Bam are two of the best fighters under 30 in, in the world, in world boxing today. I did see a bit of it getting a bit shaky when it come to negotiating with me though, you know, they wanted locations, they wanted ring sizes, you they wanted dates. Right well, no, but all I'm saying is when we, when we're negotiating a fight, if I'm sat there going to Eddie, hey, it don't matter, Bam, Martinez, Quadras, any of these fighters that you want to name, it doesn't matter, I'll fight them all for the same money and whenever you want to fight them, done, Eddie, shake hands. But when they're going, oh, for Sonny, I want a bit more money, or for Sonny, I want a smaller ring, or for Sonny, I want to make sure it's in there in a hot place at this time of day, like, once they're doing all of those, all that's for me showing as the rival competitors that you haven't got the confidence to beat me. You need to start doing all these little angles to make it slightly more in your favor. Why? Because you think those percentages are gonna help you. I think I can give up all those advantages and still win, genuinely. I think favor everything. Well, look, we're, we're away, we're, we're coming over to America. I've never been here before, it's my first time. <laughs> Yesterday, got in here 12 hours ago, I've never been here before, I'm ready. Twice he was meant to come over. Twice he was meant to come over to uh, do media, to promote and, and announce this fight. Twice he rejected it and wanted to stay in America. He didn't want to see me, he didn't want to see me face to face. I've been hounding him, when am I getting on that plane? The moment I am, I'm there, boom, I'm here. Because I'm ready, I'm serious, I'm business. I don't want just one belt. I've had one belt for too long, I want two. Well, for king, of, for, for king and country. I preferred when it was a queen, you know, I'll be wrong. Queen and country sounds better, innit? That's the Britain one, eh? Bam, we're coming, look. The British are here. You know, we take over everything, everywhere we go. So let's talk about Bam. His star's been on the rise the last couple of years. Beat Quadras, beat Sorong Masai, one of the top fighters of 2022. What were you thinking while you kind of watched him rise in the division? Um, like I said before, I appreciated the way that he took a fight, short notice. He went up two weights. I mean, at these lighter weights, we all know deep down, there's not much difference in a lot of the stuff that, that have, you know what I mean? The, the, the light flyweights can make super flyweight. Like he showed it and they can still be successful there. There's not a massive weight difference, but the fact that he jumped in, you know, at the young age he did against the fighters he did. Um, I wasn't fully surprised. He had, he had very good hands, very good um, technical uh, attributes. He's very good with his foot placement and his timing and he picks holes and he can keep finding them. He's very confident. So I wasn't fully surprised to see him go and win and then win again really um, but I appreciate it as, as a boxing fan and as someone you know at the top of my division that needs you know worthy adversaries and but worthy adversaries as well because at the end of the day this is like really the first opponent I've had that it's not the Sonny Edwards show it's the first opponent I've had where you know even when I boxed Maruti profile wise I was the bigger fighter which is crazy to me with his, his, his career that he's had and the places he's been. But unfortunately, the way this world goes that, you know, some people get the push where others don't, no matter how good of a fight you are. Um, well, Bam's had that, you know, he's probably got every bit of uh, visibility and on this side of the world, much more visibility than me. So, you know, America's always been a dream of mine to come and uh, pr perform here, show my talents and achieve here, hopefully. <laughs> so confident that you are the better fighter in this fight? Because I don't have the experience of fighters making me feel like the lesser man in a boxing ring. Well, Chris, I'll be real, the last time I lost was over three rounds. There wasn't a time I got out of a three rounds fight not thinking I won the fight, had I not, or that it was an absolutely nothing fight. And I've never taken a pasting in my life. I've never been on the hand of a beat down. I've never been nearly like not getting stopped, or like I've never been nearly like getting stopped or getting hurt or not being able to make it to the final belt. Those experiences have never happened in fighting, in sparring. I spar 12 rounds, 14 rounds I've been sparring against two, three different fighters, weights and weights above. Pitch? Of course you can, this of course PA, you can, this beautiful. This looks PA bound, Wait, which way are we going to on this one? PA bound, baby. Make sure you watch the fight, 16th of December. I, I got We're coming, I'm taking I, over the whole of America. I already know, baby. There we go. <laughs> we go back, we get back to it. I don't forget what I said. We're here on serious business though, so I'm trying to keep my enjoyment to a, a minimum right now. Um, I don't want to get my mind distracted from the mission. Would your kids enjoy this? Oh, they'd absolutely love it. I can't lie, I'm having a hell of a time. How do you feel about 
not only fighting in America, but probably 90% of the fans that are going to be in that building on December 16th are going to be Bam Rodriguez fans. That don't bother me. If anything, I've been in like, the hostile crowd a couple of times. When I fought in Dubai, there was about two, three thousand Filipinos in for a Filipino card. Um, and within five, four minutes, and that's how I know everything's going right, you know what I mean? So if anything, oh, so the moment they get quiet is when I know things are going well. So if anything, I hear the noise, I avoid it, you know? When it's quiet, I stay there. If anything, it makes it a little bit easier. Anyone? Hey, Chris, Chris, you might need to help me. <laughs> Catch me, Chris. You got me? Catch you. Uh, oh, uh, help me down, Chris. <laughs> All right, so this has been your Disney experience. What would you think? Uh, I've, I've enjoyed it. I mean, we only got to spend a little morning here. I'm a bit annoyed that Eddie didn't sort out a couple of fast passes, so we've had to <laughs> we've had to queue it out and hustle and bustle our way through past some six, seven-year-olds to get on the carousel. But now, nah, in all seriousness, it's a, it's a buzz to be here. Um, you know first sort of visit to America, coming to something that I've seen as a kid. Um, yeah, it's fitting, really genuinely fitting, and I'm looking forward to the, <laughs> to the press conference later. Generally, I, uh, that's what I've been most excited for. You see, this is everyone else's Disneyland. That press conference is my Disneyland. Genuinely, I can't wait. After December 16th, do you think you need like a VIP pass in this place, you know? Oh yeah, I'm sure, you know, Matchroom have got some good connections um, <laughs> high up with Disney, so I'm sure we'll find, you know, probably a lifetime pass or something, really, you know what I mean? Um, I've been in now with my belt, so, you know, we'll get the Guard of Honor on the way out from Mickey, Minnie and friends, and then yeah, we'll get to the presser. Sonny Edwards, Bam Rodriguez, December 16th, live on DAZN.